Hello and uh, welcome to Shark Night on the Edge. Well, it's night time for me and this knife is the Bestic Mako. Um, and I'm assuming that that Mako refers to the shark. Uh, there are a number of other meanings for the word, but I'm going to go with Mako. Seems to be the most appropriate for a knife. Um, and there it is. It's laid down that. No, let's lay it down that way. I'm not going to mess with my normal way of doing things. Um, and then I'm going to do the usual, uh, guys. Uh, materials, dimensions and weight, and then design and attributes of this uh, quite big and hefty knife. So we have a blade of K110 or K110, another blade steel that I thought I had not been exposed to, only to discover that... K110 is um, really another name for D2. So we have D2 <laughs> blade steel on this. Handle of G10, black backspacer, black spacer, backspacer of G10, liner stainless steel, clip stainless steel, and we have a pivot uh, that is made with uh, ceramic ball bearings. It gives it a nice smooth action. Right, let's uh, charge through dimensions. We have a blade length of 95 millimeters or 3.74 inches, blade thickness of 3.8 millimeters or 0.150 inches, Close length of the sky, 123 millimeters or 12.3 centimeters, and that is 4.84 inches. Handle thickness, I didn't speak about that. Uh, handle thickness is uh, 145 millimeters. That is not right. That must be surely 14.5 millimeters, uh, and that is uh, 0.57 inches. Uh, and then overall length of the knife, let's flick him out. Overall length is 218 millimeters and that is 8.58 inches. Right, let's check the weight. And I did say, big hefty knife this, uh, big solid slab of, uh, what do they call it? Uh, K110, there you go. Nice little uh, snippet, a little bit of information that I will use um, in my next knife discussion. And sound clever. <laughs> so let's get that on uh, and let's check. I've got their stated weights here, which confirms it is a heavy knife. Uh, 156, actually quite, quite, quite a bit lighter than what um, the weights uh, that I got online. Um, but uh, nevertheless, a heavy knife, as I said, 156 grams. And it is ounces, 5.5 ounces. There we go. Let's get that all out the way and speak a little more about the design of this knife. Right, so we've got uh, clearly a drop point blade, a black stone wash. Uh, quite a big um, fuller running almost the full length of the blade. It sort of stops uh, where the blade starts tapering towards the tip. Nice straight plunge line running down into a big, uh, let's turn that like that so you can see it. Uh, so the, the straight plunge line running into that big sharpening choil uh, that can kind of, and I'll show you when I get, get the, the knife in my hand, can be used as a, a front finger choil, but it is a little bit tight. Nice edge on the knife, by the way, while we're looking at it here, yeah, nice even uh, edge. Uh, not not a, um, oh, I should say, is a factory edge, so it's not a mirror edge, but um, neat and uniform nevertheless. Um, flat grind on the blade, quite a deep grind. Uh, and then let's look at that. So we've got a little thumb ramp at the back of the blade and you've got a little bit of jumping on that. And then let's just look at that flipper. So a big flipper on the shark. Um, so <laughs> flipper? Fin? Yeah, what do they call it on a shark? It's a fin. Never mind. So quite a big uh, flipper on this. It does mean you can really get hold of it, uh, jumping on the, the flipper. And then that flies out on those ceramic ball bearings. Right, I think that just about covers off everything on the blade. Maybe just mention it is quite a square spine on that blade. But you can see a nice, big, chunky, hefty blade. Uh, right, let's look at the handle. So the handle is a little bit of sculpting going on here that does give good purchase when you get the knife in hand. You can see those slightly horizontal ridges on it, and those are quite deep. Uh, let's turn it so we get a little bit of a shadow, quite deep, so you do get good grip on that handle. And then that extra bit of sculpting on the top and bottom of the blade, slightly kind of hollow, that just gives you that 
sort of slightly tapered off shape to the edge of the handle on either side. The edges, right on the edges, not that much uh, softening done on this. It's quite square actually uh, on the on all these edges, so not too much chamfering done on that. A little bit, but um, but still quite square. Not bad in hand though. You know, you don't uh, you don't really get hot spots. Uh, you do a little bit. Eh? It might be a little more. Uh, let's try and invent a um, an adjective here. It might be a little hot spotty. So on this then some other knives that are a little bit more rounded around the edge but not not desperately uncomfortable i suppose if you are using this knife for heavy use um and then we've got i mentioned the g10 backspacer we've got jimping on that backspacer as well and that jimping is actually cut into the liner as well uh, I didn't mention the hardware, the other hardware on the knife, so the screws, they're all stainless steel as well, and it is all Torx, so if you want to get the knife apart, no problems, no issues there. Um, and then let's just have a look at that. So I mentioned that big sharpening twirl. Um, so you can, as I said, you can get your finger in there. It's not the most generous, and if you put too much pressure on your finger, you're going to stray a little bit onto that edge. So you can use it um, with your finger then on that that little ramp on the blade, that thumb ramp, but uh, you know, just uh, you'll have to be a little bit cautious when you are choking up on the blade, but uh, definitely very secure when you get a little bit further back on the handle and you've also got the protection of that flipper. So in hand, not a small knife, uh, my medium-sized hands, again, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, I wear a large glove, but you can see I very comfortably fit into that sort of general curved shape and the, the finger twirl there. I comfortably fit in there with my hand. And then even if you've got bigger hands, you are very easily going to get onto this, uh, onto this handle. Uh, right, what do I need to cover? Uh, still, the uh, pocket clip. So pocket clip I mentioned is stainless steel and that is clearly tip up. Right hand only, you can see it's got a little curve to that uh, pocket clip and it has been skeletonized. And if we look at it that way, you can see that that pocket clip has been countersunk as well, although the screws haven't been countersunk, but plenty space on that to get that over uh, thicker material. Quite a, quite a stout, I mean, it is springy, but it's um, quite a tough, quite a tough uh, pocket clip. But it certainly is going to hold on to whatever you're putting that over. Um, and then it is slightly angled. You can see the angle of the top of that pocket clip. It is deep carry, by the way. You're going to see a little bit of the top of the knife sticking out, and obviously you're going to see the pocket clip. But with that angle, if you've got it in a right-hand pocket, that should pull the knife towards the side of the pocket and out of the way of any other things that you might have in your pocket. Right, what else do I need to speak about? Let's see if we can get this without the use of a torch. Maybe not. Um, it is here somewhere. Let's get that on. Uh, one level up. On the inside, you can see that there is some material removal. So that has been machined on the inside of the knife, um, just to make those liners a little bit, a little bit lighter. And um, that's on the lock side as well. So there we go. You can see that. You can actually see it a little more clearly this side. Um, and then it is a liner lock, so regular liner lock, um, nothing special there really, a little bit of jumping on that liner for you to get a grip of when you are unlocking the knife, um, all the standard fare there. Um, surprisingly not the smoothest, uh, and again, I, you know, I, I, it's not gritty, but we've got one of the <laughs> way I seem to be able to explain it is when you're opening and closing the knife, you get that slight sh sh sort of sound on it, so it's not... It's not buttery smooth, but it is, and let's just do this, it is a very drop shutty um, knife. So that is those ceramic bearings and I guess just the weight of that blade does make it a pretty drop shutty knife. That fuller I mentioned earlier on is when it's in its closed position is just a little bit too close to the handle for you to actually make use of it as a thumb flipper or to get your nail under it there to do a spidey flick on it. So the only way of deploying the knife is by using the flipper. Um, but that does work well enough, so no issues there. So it's got a little bit of bounce there. Let's just see as it close, see that detent. Yeah, no, it is a de decent detent. I guess that's just the weight of the blade. Right, I think that just about covers 
everything on the knife. Uh, what I do need to say is there are a couple of options available on the knife. Um, so this is the OD green version, uh, black stone washed blade. Um, but you get a black G10 version that has a black stone washed blade and a stainless steel colored blade. And I think just looking at pictures of it, it looks like a satin finish on that. And then you get a blue G10 that has uh, the also that satin finish blade. Um, and then obviously this version here. Uh, right, I think uh, we've covered everything on the knife. Um, so let me quickly jump in now and once again say thanks very much to uh, Blades and Triggers for uh, providing this knife again for me to mess around with for a couple of days, look it over, form an opinion and then obviously share that uh, with you. Um, and uh, the only thing then left to do is size comparison. So I'm going to fly through the usual ones and then I've got a couple of other knives um, that I think are similar-ish um, and we'll get those on here as well. So let's start with this one, the Spyderco Manix 2. Similar sized knives, similar weights. Yeah, yeah, kind of there. The, I think the best tech is, is heavier. Yeah, it's definitely heavier um, and is slightly longer. Right, so there, that is the Spyderco Manix 2. Uh, somewhere over here, there we go, Medford, the Medford Slim Midi, the other knife that I also use. Um, also a little bit shorter than the Mako. Uh, and yeah, definitely lighter as well. And it will be thinner, this being the uh, Medford Slim Midi. Right, slimmer as well. And then the other one that I use, and I say it every time, but this knife has been out forever um, and is still available on Benchmade's uh, catalog so I'm sure a lot of you actually know this knife this is the Benchmade Mini Barrage um, again just to give you a little bit of size perspective there we go let's get out that out the way now where's those other knives that I wanted to bring on here so the one is a best stick uh, Toucan and I used this in another review as well also as a size comparison so from the same uh, mother company um, also, the OD Green, you can see they uh, obviously have a little bit of this G10 lying about for their knives. So, and this version in actually, as it turns out, the same blade steel. So that says D2 where this says K110. Beautiful satin finish, by the way, on that, um, on that knife. But very, very similarly sized uh, knives. Uh, again, the Mako is a heavier knife. Uh, construction seems pretty much the same. Uh, looking at it there, the Mako, a little bit longer, but uh, seems to be the same thickness of blade stock. Right, um, and then the other one was an uh, interesting knife here, is a an old Boker knife. Let's see if I can flick this out. It's not the snappiest, uh, you can see it quite soft, not the snappiest knife, um, but that also similar similar type of knife very similar size if you're looking for an edc you know that size that would have suited you i'm not sure if this is available anymore probably not is a knife that i've had for a very very long time um it is in tip down position that uh, that pocket clip but you can see you can remove a little a little piece on the back there and flip that um, that pocket clip around and it is right hand only um, but the interesting part on this is the blade steel. It's, it's not a blade steel I've seen anywhere else, not in any of the knives that I've had in my hand, and that is X-15T.N. Dot. <laughs> to read it out exactly as it says. And that's a French steel, um, and apparently it is extremely stainless um, and is used often in diving knives. Um, but anyway, there we go. <laughs> Something a little different and interesting, maybe, on the channel. Yeah, that wants to fall over there's the show side of those two knives right i think that's it that covers everything on this knife so you know another solid offering from bestech uh, a budget type of knife but you know very solidly built if you're looking for an edc that is going to be uh, tough and maybe you're not going to be feel that sorry for it if you um, if you scratch it up and you do use it for heavy use which probably does make it then the ideal uh, edc type of knife uh, uh by the way i didn't mention it's got the uh, the um, the pivot cap 
the old style uh, best deck B. I've, I've looked at a few of the more expensive best decks and they've got a different B design on there. So you know, I mentioned in one of my reviews that that might be reserved for the more expensive um, knives. But there we go, a little bit of a look on the show side again and on that side. But yeah, nice knife, uh, very, very, very solidly built and good value. Guys, I think that is uh, that is it. That's it for this review. So uh, once again, all that's left for me to say is thanks so much for joining me. I really do appreciate your time. And as I always do say, I would really appreciate if you would um, subscribe and hit that, uh, that bell icon so that you can be notified every time I launch um, a or release a new video. Because as I always do say, I really would love you to join me more often. And other than that, you go well and God bless.